Hey folks, welcome back to Leaf Green vs. Blue. We're here at the top of Pokemon Tower, or almost the top, um, and we're going to be checking out a little bit of, of spooky business. We have a showdown with a ghost. The ghost. The one and only. A Marowak. Now, this is one of my favorite kind of weird things in, in, the first, in the Kanto games is here's this uncatchable Pokemon that, you know, has a specifically programmed kind of almost cutscene where it first appears as a ghost and then is identified, even though you've been automatically identifying all the ghosts up until here. Um, and it's just, it's a little neat storytelling thing. Um, this is Marowak, the, the ghost of Cubone's mother, was killed by Team Rocket in Rocket's occupation of this tower, which just kind of adds to the whole idea of the spirits here are not at peace. They are so, so not at peace. Um, and it's, it's also kind of a blind rage. It can't necessarily identify who caused it so much pain. Maybe it's just lashing out at anybody. Maybe it's lashing out at humans in general. Either way, can't catch it. Um, if you want to have a Marowak on your team, you're either going to have to find, catch, and evolve a Cubone, or wait until Victory Road. Next up, we have Snorlax. Snorlax is uh, one of them on the land, you trigger it encounters. Um, two in the game, this is one of them. I think this is the only one I'm gonna bother to show, because they're exactly the same, same level, same moveset, etc. Um, the thing about Snorlax, I love Snorlax, but catching one of these Snorlax can be really, really annoying. Um, for a variety of reasons. Um, so Snorlax, as you can see there, uses Rest, one of his favorite moves, hence the whole snoring thing, you know, Snorlax. Um, and that means that whenever he uses rest, he will restore all of his HP to maximum and get rid of any status ailments that you might have put onto him. So, um, paralysis, uh, burn, maybe not freezing, probably freezing. I don't know. You're probably not going to freeze him. That doesn't happen very often. Um, so the only status ailment he can't break out of is sleep. So you gotta put him to sleep, and that's temporary. Um, and that makes it really hard to catch him, because you'll want to whittle him down to being in the red, and put a status ailment on him, and then you're in a good position to catch him, and then he'll use rest, and all of your hard work is just totally squandered, and you can't do much about that other than maybe stall him out of PP in third gen. Can't do that in first gen. So, uh, good freaking luck with that. Um, definitely pack the best balls that you can for these matches if you do plan on catching him. And the thing is, it's not nearly as fun to use rest on your own team. Um, it's not really as satisfying as you might hope given how frustrating it was for you to overcome. So, it's just... I love Snorlax, I love his design, I love his concept, I love using Body Slam and just having that mental image, but it's, it's not, it's one of those not quite as satisfying things as you might like. Um, one saving grace, I guess, is that in first gen, he doesn't have a Chesto Berry to wake himself up automatically the first time small, very small little thing there. Now then, onto the meat of the episode. We are catching not one, but two team members in this episode. The first is this Venonat here. Venonat is a bug poison type, and it's the first bug type we've encountered in quite a while. Um, we, you know, we had Caterpie and Weedle way back in Viridian Forest, and a little bit later in the Safari Zone, there's Scyther and Pinsir. 
But Venadat is kind of this little uh, weird middle period, and his stats reflect it. His stats, I mean, they're better than like Caterpie and Weedles, but they're not great. They're like, they average in the 50-ish base stat range. Um, so for this point in the game, you really need to work on getting him some levels and evolving him if you want him to be an important member of your team, or like as soon as you catch him. You're gonna have to put some investment in. Um, the other thing worth noting is that he is bug poison type, um, and especially in first gen, he is gonna be weak to psychic, um, and psychic is just absurdly broken in first gen, and Venonat's gonna be prey to that. And he's gonna be weak to fire, um, he's gonna be weak to rock, he's gonna be a lot of... It's not the best defensive typing, is what I'm saying. Um, but if you put the effort in, he can actually be a pretty good member of your team. Also, first gen capture, of course. So the one thing, it's a weird thing that I want to point out, um, and it's getting a little ahead of myself because it's getting into uh, the evolution for Venonat, but so in first gen, Venonat's spe base special was 40. Um, and in third gen, special attack kept at 40, special defense was up to 55, so there was a net gain there. Um, but when he evolved, um, Gen 1, base special was 90, and in Gen 3, 90 special attack, 75 special defense. So they kind of, not only was the net gain removed, but special defense fell behind. Um, it's an interesting, interesting decision. I mean, Venomoth still overall stat-wise better in every single way, but, um... I don't know. Weird, weird touch. Now then, um, getting into that whole evolution business I was talking about, um, I would strongly, strongly recommend evolving your Venonat into Venomoth, Venomoth as soon as possible. Um, now, the observant members of the audience will notice that Vincent is already level 31, and the encyclopedias in the audience will know that Venonat evolves into Venomoth at 31, and so it's a little weird that Venonat here is level 31 and hasn't evolved yet. Um, I haven't gone back in the footage to check, because I edited this literal years ago. I'm pretty sure Vincent fainted at the end of the last battle after leveling up or something. I don't know, I'm not clear. But, um, evolves at level 31. So won't be too much grinding for you, but still a little bit of investment. Um, Venonat overall, I really enjoyed having on my team, partly because it gave me another Pokemon that could use Psychic type moves, but um, wasn't actually a Psychic type. And even if that's not practical, I think it's uh, it's a nice little bit of variety. Anyway, the other Pokémon that we are adding to our team today is a horsey! Golly, that's a low-level horsey. That's gonna need some training. <laughs> um, and so horsey, unlike Venonat, has kind of some stats that are on par with what you want right now, and some stats that are just totally, totally not. Um, so 70 base defense, and 70 base special attack, and 70 base special in Gen 1. Um, so those are pretty decent. Those are like, I don't know, mid-evolution kind of tier um, stats. 30 base HP, 40 base attack, 25 base special defense. So you're really gonna have to play Horsey um, selectively. Once he evolves into Cedra, not, I mean, he improves, but he's still not stellar. Um, up to 95 base defense and 95 base special attack, um, and 85 base speed. So solid, but not exceptional. And I was about to say, that must be why they gave him a new evolution in Gen 2, that it's 
available in Gen 3 once you've beaten Elite Four. But Kingdra doesn't actually get any base stats higher than 95. It just raises attack and special defense so it's really well-rounded. Which I just think it's weird. It's a weird decision. Um, I didn't realize that about Kingdra. I thought Kingdra would have gotten up into like the 110s or something, but no. Um, Ability-wise, Horsey gets Swift Swim, um, which doubles speed in the rain. If you're running a rain team, it'll be good. If not, doesn't really come into play. Um, Gen 4 onward, it also gets Sniper, which increases the damage of critical hits, so that's nice. Um, but that's not in Gens 1 through 3, so it won't come into play in this playthrough. Also, I totally nicknamed Horsey Kingsley, and I I don't get a King Dry in this playthrough. So, that's awkward. Um, but that wraps up all the work we're doing this episode. A little bit disjointed, I apologize. Uh, but I will see you guys next time.